Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that everyone had a good weekend. Um, we today are going to be talking to Mr. Precious Pauling, who is a poet, an artist, a advocate, a survivor, all of the above. She's an awesome young lady that I am excited to get to know right here on the Speak Up and Inspire series. So I hope that you will join us. She will be joining us here very shortly. So we, this month, are talking to um, different people about nutrition, about wellness, about being survivors and advocates in the community. So <clears throat> I hope that you will enjoy join us today. Um, we have been building a very good following every Monday. And so I hope that you will tune in, even if just for a few minutes, for to personally meet Miss Precious Pauling. Again, she is a poet. She is an activist. She is a survivor. She's an advocate. She's an artist. She's doing great things in the community. She has a um, organization that is called I Choose Me. So I really am very interested in finding out all about her organization because one thing um, about being professionals and being parents and being activists in the community is that sometimes we forget to do self-care and sometimes we forget to take care of ourselves. So when I hear I Choose Me movement and heard about Miss Precious, even though I don't know exactly what her movement is, you're going to be learning um, with it today with me because I've been so busy. So you're going to be learning today with me what Miss Precious does. I can only go off of what I thought when I heard I Choose me movement. So what are you thinking? What do you think her movement is all about? When you think of I choose me, what do you think of? I would love to hear what you have to say. So put it in your comments and we will wait to talk to Miss Precious as she tells us what her organization is, what is behind the name, and hopefully she will share some of her uh, poetry with us. So please join us right here on the Speak Up and Inspire series with me, Tiffany Brown, and tonight's guest is Miss Precious Pauling. So I will be bringing on her on right now, and we will wait for her to come on. Last week, we were talking to Miss Latasha Patterson with It Works. She talked to us about healthy weight loss, healthy living, and we learned a lot last week. One of the tools and the tips that she gave for living healthy and losing weight the healthy way is to exercise. Now, I know me, I'm very busy, but one thing that she said is a great way to exercise, have fun, and doing what you're already doing without making the extra time is to dance. Dance while you're cooking, dance, dance yes. while you're um, you're cleaning, dance while you're talking on the phone. Just yeah. dance your little heart out because <laughs> dance increases your heart rate. It's fun and it's good exercise. So I actually have started doing that myself. Um, I went out and bought some more alkaline water. So I'm drinking alkaline um, mm. because that fights off bacteria and so forth in your body. And so yes. make sure that you... Um, go back to last week's Speak Up and Inspire series with Latasha Patterson and make sure you look and review over our podcast with her last week. And please feel free to connect with her if you are trying to lose weight or if you just need to make some lifestyle changes to be more healthier. She also specializes in the keto lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> so hello, Miss Tasha. How are you? Hi, Miss Precious. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Can you? I'm me? doing I'm good. good. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you for I can me. see. Thank you. Thank you. I am. Um, I ran in the house, so <laughs> I'm not as professional looking as you are right now. I literally. <laughs> Walked in the house, just dropped on the couch, oh. dropped my purse, and came alive because I didn't want to be late for you. Oh. Um, so tell us about you. Tell us about Precious. What, what are we going to learn? And um, what are we going to learn tonight about you? 
Well, first of all, let me say thank you for inviting me to be a part of your audience and a part of your your movement, because clearly you are on a mission. I love that, queening up in the queen city, <laughs> queening up just in general. But uh, I'm a yes, mom of five amazing kids. I'm a wife of 17 years, but I'm also someone who tapped into my gift at an early age, at age of 12. And I'm a prophetic poet. And so I have the ability, I say, as God whispers to me, I write it down. But through that tapping okay. into my gift, I have learned or inspired the mission of I Choose Me, hashtag no more excuses. I am a survivor of molestation. And one of those main keys is recognizing your worth, your beauty, so that you don't get stuck in your past. And so what I do is I soul coach people into better relationships with themselves in order to turn their pain into power so they can show up in their purpose. So Because too often we get stuck in the things that made us and we forget that it was molding us until we accept those things and understand that those things were just building us into our true self, will we be able to move past all of those pains and get from the valley to the mountaintop? And so my movement, as you see, is I Choose Me hashtag No More Excuses, which started as a movement, which I have turned into a nonprofit now so that I can be able to do more because I did say I'm a mom of five. So turning into yeah. a nonprofit <laughs> allows me to get a little bit of assistance so I'm not giving out, you know, outside of myself as I serve. And so one of the key things is our motto, our mantra, and our slogan. Our motto is I pledge to embrace who I am today, love who I was yesterday, and inspire who I will become tomorrow. Our mantra is the closer I get to me, the better I'm able to see who I was called to be. And our slogan is love grows everything, so love yourself first. I just want you to understand that you teach people how to treat you, and we are queens. And when we show up and celebrate ourselves, it's so much easier to celebrate each other. That is amazing. I love it. So tell me one more time. Your mission is, because I liked it and I heard it, and I want to hear it again. Tell me again. Your mission is? My mission is to soul coach women, girls especially, but anybody, into a better relationship with themselves in order to turn their pain into power in order to show up in purpose. I love it. I love it. Um, I'm an advocate myself, and um, I'm a survivor of domestic violence, sexual mm. assault, um, mm. and childhood abuse. So mm. I understand all, all of that. Yes. Um, I believe that it is it is um, something that we should not hold back mm. as survivors. Yes, um, we should not be ashamed. We should be willing to speak up. Um, that is the reason why I started the Speak Up and Inspire series, because mm. I realized that once I started talking, I met mm. so many other people who yes. needed a vehicle and found out that I could be that vehicle for them. Mm. Um, and, and you're doing the same thing. There's yeah. so many survivors out here who need someone that is willing to speak up because mm. when you speak up, you inspire other people to speak up and, and be active mm. in the community. So tell me, what was your inspiration for your movement? What was your inspiration? And if you don't mind sharing a little bit about oh, your story. Absolutely. Um, one, of, one, of our, one of my favorite quotes of the movement is remove the shame and get in your lane. So that's exactly what I was thinking you were just speaking. Because it's about us right. understanding that we are the light. But the reason I created the movement, for so many years I was just doing a woman's group. And then in 2000 mm -hmm. and... Um, 12, I wrote on my vision board that I wanted to create a movement that inspires women to fall in love with themselves so they can build that self-esteem, so they can see their worth, so that they can teach people their value. And so I kept on saying, well, how do I do this? What do I do? And so I got this vision of loving yourself. I choose me. So for about four years, I had to sit on it because I wanted to mm -hmm. like um, get it. I wanted to brand it because when I got the vision, I felt like it was so much bigger than you know, what I, what I had originally expected it to be. And so when I actually mm -hmm. got the opportunity to put the idea together where when I was thinking about loving yourself, I want you to meet yourself right where you are. So if you look at the logo, right. it is like your pain meets your triumph, right? Because I believe that that is mm -hmm. what makes us great. When I say your pain meets mm -hmm. your triumph or your pain meets all that on purpose street. So when you 
learn yeah. to go through that, you get to walk in your purpose. And so I want to inspire women to understand that until they understand that the things that they've been through is not is what makes them great. It's not in spite of it, but it's because of that. That is your strength. That is your light. Because I believe that we can't turn on each other's light, but we can provide enough light for us to find each other switch and so when you celebrate yourself when you own your story when you show up with that thing that makes you great you help people find their switch and that is how you impact the world so i feel like when i show up for me then i get to live out my assignment too we have roles and titles because we are all moms and some of our wives and friends we have so many things Mm -hmm. that Tell us who we are, but that is not what we are. What we are is on assignment. We all have a God piece. And I believe that the world is a Mm -hmm. big puzzle and everybody has a piece. And until we understand that we are one of a kind and that we are perfect, that is another thing I say. I used to hear people say all the time, oh, you're not perfect. No, I believe you are perfect when you become authentic because you are an original. There is nothing to compare yourself to. So how do you reach into yourself and grab that perfection you do it by celebrating every piece of yourself so that you can show up at that present time because as long as you're holding on you can never be present and if you never get present you never see your future wow wow that was amazing (laughs) (laughs) thank you Yes, I, I I love it. Um, one thing that you know when I go out and I talk to um, women, um, I work a lot with, of course, domestic violence and sexual assault victims, mm-hmm. since that's what that's what my experience is. So that's usually who I touch. Mm-hmm. Um, I find that I have to take time to talk about mental health oh. because mm-hmm. for me the most important part to your journey of healing and being a survivor starts here. Uh, Um, mm, mm, mm. If you don't have your mental together, if you don't realize that you Mm. are worth more than being abused or Mm. being hurt or being lied to, if you don't know that you are a victim and Mm. that you're being a child, especially you did not, deserve to be Mm. violated you didn't Mm. deserve to be hurt you didn't deserve to be abused and when you come to the realization that you are stronger than Mm. yes users Mm. when you realize that your strength has pulled you out of this hole that Uh. probably a lot of people thought you were going to die in yeah or you were just going to to de- deal with mm. when you bring yourself out of that hole and when you mentally are ready to move on with your life life mm. and be something to be more than your present then that just catapults everything Catapult. that's else the word. in your life that's the word that is the word it does. It, it, it's like a spiral but it starts with your mentality and it goes to your heart. And once you have those two in place with God behind you, you can accomplish anything, mm. anything at all. Mm. We are um, soul and- sisters, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but that goes to what you were saying, that yes, I choose yes, me. So yes. If I have this man standing in front of me who's berating me, calling me names, mm. um, holding me back from my man. from from my from my strengths and so forth and so on. Mm. Eventually you have to choose me. You have mm. to choose to survive. You have to choose to be a mother to your children. You have to choose to be an advocate in the community and stop other yes. women and families yes. from being hurt. You have to, you have to choose that. You, you definitely have to choose that. And yes. you also have so, to understand that until you show up for you, you can never authentically show up for anybody else. And so we often fool yeah. ourselves into mm-hmm. believing that we're given to people. But if you haven't given to yourself first, then you really aren't given to anybody else. If you haven't loved yourself first, then you don't even know how to do that for anybody else. So you are your prime example. And when you said that, it made me Mm -hmm. remind me of one of my poems. This one is called Tears Are Answers. There's no doubt that I love you, but it's the fears that I see. Because when I look at your actions, your best interest is in me. And I've held on to the dream that you'll come around. But as I sit in my room, I hear drip drop sound. The sound of my tears as they Mm. fall on the bed. And the reason I hear them is because it's so quiet in my head. For I stand still in a time to absorb what is true. And I find in my quiet moments, I'm crying over you. 
crying over the past, the present, mm. and the future still to come, thinking about our ups and downs, and especially our little one. But as I laid on my pillow and I wiped away my tears, I found out my deepest secrets and my submissive fears. You see, I wasn't crying over you, so let's get this clear, but I was crying over me who I lost through the years. So I got out of my bed, went over to the mirror just to see who is the reflection that looks back at me? And I see that I found what I have longed to need, a new love for myself and a gift God placed in me. And so I figured out the battle and I found out just what to do. I had to first love myself so I could then teach you. And that's the journey of I Choose Me. I teach you how to love me. I teach you how to treat mm. me. But I have to show up for me first in order to show up for you. And so when I do that, then I'm showing you how and what I require because I understand that I am God's child and I matter. And so until I know mm -hmm. I matter, I can't expect you to respect me or know my worth. Mm. Wow. That is so true. Um, you know, a lot of times the things that happen in our relationships, even abuse, mm. Yeah. Sometimes we have to take accountability for staying in situations mm. that we know are not healthy for us. Yeah. Um, you know, and I'm just talking from a domestic violence situation, you know, mm. yes. and I know that you have experience in, in other areas, mm -hmm. but as women, we, men will only do to us what we, what allow. we allow them to do. And even though I do not blame victims for being abused in domestic mm -hmm. violence or even I'm not putting blame. What I'm saying is that ownership, most I, I, ownership. I have never met a victim mm -hmm. or a woman in a marriage that she's miserable in mm -hmm. that can say there were no signs that he was abusive or there mm -hmm. were no signs that he hit me or mm -hmm. there were no signs that you know, he wasn't a loyal man or there was no right. signs that he didn't believe in God. I don't, I've never met a victim of any circumstance that has told me there were absolutely no signs. Mm. Um, and if, and one time that I have, once we talked to her, she was like, you know what? Yeah, he did do that. Mm. Um, allowing him to disrespect you, calling you out of your name, um, you know, treating your kids any kind of way if he's, you know, mm. if he's not there now, um, you know, not believing in God, mm. not praying with you. Mm. you know, those are all signs that unless that's the kind of man you want, we as women, someone said this to me earlier, we are nurturers. Yes. So we want to help the people in our life but not everybody can be helped and not mm. everybody is healthy for yes. us um so your movement saying i choose me mm. that says so much and mm. it's not and it's not a selfish thing no. to choose no. yourself no it's selfless it's not, it's not a selfish thing yes. yes it is because we give so much of uh, ourselves we are twins so much of <laughs> yes <laughs> so much of ourselves we're wives we're, we're Mom, moms. Yes, we have yes, careers. yes. <laughs> All of that. We give so much for ourselves. So you're right. It's a selfless act. Mm. And at the end of the day, if I don't choose me, I can't. And like you said, I can't do nothing for anybody else. No, at all. I, I really, yeah. I really can't. <laughs> yeah. Really can't. Yeah. So you just recited a piece of yours what is the name of the piece that you just recited and um do you have your poetry somewhere that we can read it or absolutely it? i have a website i have cds i have everything this is my book right here this one is my 365 days of loving yourself to life becoming a gift you are always meant to be this is a book of affirmations okay. so as thick as it is don't mm -hmm. let it scare you <laughs> They don't scare you. <laughs> but what I did was <laughs> I started the movement um, live, going Facebook live every Tuesday at the end of 2016. Okay. And through the year, okay. I went back because people kept on saying, well, what are the steps? How do I choose myself? How do I do those things? So I went back on my lives because right. I say, as God whispers, I speak. So I'm always in real time. And I went through my notes mm -hmm. and I created, well, I could have did two books. But I narrowed it down yeah. to 365 of my affirmations. And I mixed it with okay. um, 16 of my original poems. 
and five testimonials from women who learned to love themselves and show up with my 16 year old being mm. one of the um, women I featured in the young women I featured in the book because it's about you understanding yeah. your worth and it's about you doing it because I mm -hmm. feel like every book comes with a, a, a can do because the idea is mm -hmm. that when you read an affirmation that is lighting yourself. So every day you read an affirmation, I want you to light that candle. And I want you to get so used to lighting that candle every single day that at the end of 365 days, you stay lit because that is your job in the world. I want you to understand that I don't care what you've been through. You are mm -hmm. amazing. And I need you to see that in yourself because until you see it, nobody else is going to see that light that is you. Also... This is my other book. This is a book of poetry. I have a poem in here that I want to okay. read. It's called A Taught Love. And it is specified okay. for domestic violence because my favorite cousin in the whole wide world, I got to experience domestic violence through her. And so I have the gift of mm -hmm. empathy. And so, like I say, 90% of my poetry, I have never experienced. It's just a gift. But after I, it's mm -hmm. like their spirit or energy falls on me like they do in the morning and a poem is born. Nine, 15 minutes mm -hmm. tops for me to write a poem but the effect of it is like priceless and so you tell me right. when you're ready but I definitely want to share a tort love with you when you started to speak I said oh god I gotta give it to her I gotta give her a tort love okay and so it's a tort love let's it's hear it it's called a tort love hold on where you at where you at <laughs> <laughs> While you're looking for it, what is yes. the name of your first book again? The first book is 365 Days of Loving Yourself to Life, Becoming a Gift You Are Always Meant to Be. All of that is on my website, PreciousPaulin.com. Okay. Why can't I see it? Because mm. I'm going to be posting all this all week. So I want to make sure that I have everything down. 360 oh, days of loving yourself. 65, the whole year. 365 days, the whole year. You got to love gotcha. yourself every day. Okay, I found it. I found it. <laughs> this is called a toy okay. love. Yes, yes. It says, why do you hit me? Better yet, why do I stay? Have I convinced myself it will be different another day? Why do you verbally attack me? Better yet, why do I cry? Maybe because I know it will cause my spirit to surely die. Why do you throw your trash on me? Better yet, why am I content with being your garbage disposal? Maybe because I'm selling myself so short and die in need of a marriage proposal. Why do I allow you mm. to give me deeper insecurities? Better yet, why don't I love who I am? It seems, how come it seems I'm selling my soul to the devil just to keep a man? Why am I waiting for you to love me? Better yet, why don't I love myself? I've bottled up the true enemy and hidden it away on the shelf. Why am I asking questions? It's because I've allowed you to hold all the keys. I've given you all the rights to my own destiny. Because until I can love me for me, how can I expect you to see? See the person I, that I truly am without getting caught up in your life's pain? Treating me as if in your cloudy days I supplied your rain? I just pray that you would see me as your son and treat my temple just the same and treat me as the queen I am in our precious Jesus name. But what I had to learn is that I don't have to wait for you to get the validation that I need because what I had to realize is that God is the gardener to my seed. So I'm not waiting for you to love me, but if you want, you can jump aboard. Now that I know that I have all the love I need for myself and yes, the Lord. So I will no longer accept just any old kind of love because that of which I deserve is the releasing of two white doves. I only pray that you would get it right and the love that we share could be preserved throughout our nights. But if you can't be the man that I need, better yet the quench of my thirst, I'm sorry to say that this is the end because I've learned to put myself first. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Wow. That is phenomenal. Thank you. I think I do. Every single experience <laughs> that I've heard with domestic violence just got covered in that poem. Wow. Thank you, that Queen. Is, Thank you. Awesome. Yes. 
Wow. And that was from me. I am blown away. Look, oh, you're blown away. I got one about oh, abuse, I, too. Look, I got it all. I just, abuse, I got it. I just <laughs> want to so do many snaps, snaps and everything. <laughs> I love it. I Thank love you. it. Thank wow. you. Wow. So, okay, so you have your book, The 365 Days of Loving Yourself. And then what is the name of your poetry book? Precious Thoughts from the Soul. Precious, precious thoughts. thoughts from the soul. Yes, and precious thoughts on the soul. It thank, thank you. Precious <laughs> thoughts on the soul. So how can I get these two books? Preciouspaulin.com. You can get any everything. I have a calendar. This is my calendar. Okay. And what I did with my calendar is I took a book and I created a day mm -hmm. for every day of the year. I um, itemized the book so that you can have an affirmation mm -hmm. every single day. So let's see. Today is wow. March the 18th. And so for today, uh -huh. it says, you are a masterpiece in the world. And so every day wow. is a different saying. Um, tomorrow is, are you ready to fulfill the requirements? So we're going we gonna to nurture you, but we're going to check you too. We're going to check you, boo, because we understand that we got to be real. <laughs> how do we, how yes. do we really show up? And you need real people in your life. You need people that's going to love you to full, but also require you to show up for you in a way that nobody else has. So until you're ready to show up for you, I want to make I choose me available so that I can inspire you to show up for yourself until you can do it by yourself. And so that's my purpose. That's mm. my mission, right? Is to let you see you because I'm so glad that because of what I've been through and the people that touched me, I got to see me. Wow. You know, um, I need to get one of those calendars. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get one of those calendars. Um, and I'm thinking about my daughter. So oh, yes. my daughter's 11. She's 11 years old. Mm. But I think having a calendar like that, mm. especially in front of my daughter, mm. for her to see that every day, um, because she's going through that phase now where her body is changing. Mm. Um, she, She's she's learning who she is, what, who she wants to be. Um, and I think that that would be an awesome gift for girls, Absolutely. especially not just not just us ladies, but for girls, you know, men even as well. Mm. But our girls, you know, they, they're growing up in a time now mm. where it's all about body image yes. and you know twerking and <laughs> and yes. so much stuff <laughs> um that we need positive things like that yes. for us to, for us for them to see yes to have them positive affirmations, affirmations yes. every day to tell them that they're beautiful mm. to let them know you know, that they are valuable, mm. um, they, um, that they are a priority, you know, that their bodies are to be sacred mm -hmm. and cherished. Mm. I, I believe that that is a phenomenal way to do it. Thank you. Is to have the calendar mm -hmm. and to have every single day in there. Yeah. That is awesome. Thank you. And I Why love that. I, think of that. I love that you said that because uh, <laughs> my husband, when he, after he read the book and saw it, he gave me, he said, you know, he said that it was, a young girl's guide to success and a seasoned woman's yeah. check back into reality. And I said, wow. I love you. Right, right. That's what it I is. said. And then one of my other readers, uh, Miss Shamika Baptiste, she said it was a queen's Bible. And at first I was like, oh Lord, don't do that. But then God put the acronym. <laughs> yes. Then he put the, um, the infinite, yes. uh, acronym in me and it was basic instructions before living effortlessly. Once you show wow. up for you, yes. you get to live. Yes effortlessly it's about you understanding mm -hmm. that you are on assignment and once you yes. really accept that you learn to embrace the preparation because you believe that you were mm -hmm. built for the ride and then you go through those mm -hmm. things in order to be molded into the precious gift that you are and so that's the role mm -hmm. those are the steps and so i don't want you to get weary on the journey i want you to know that the mountain mm -hmm. has some sunny days it got some snow on mm -hmm. there sometimes the sun shines sometimes it don't but as long as you keep climbing mm -hmm. you will eventually get to the top and i'll promise you the view will be worth the climb it really would yes yes i have um two women that are keep popping in my head as you talk mm. um 
two of them are advocates that I've had the pleasure of working with. Mm. And one of them has been on the podcast, um, Katrina Thomas. Mm. Um, I will make sure that I send you the link, even though the link, you know, I post all the time, Mm. but I want to send you the specific link to Mm. her um, interview with me um, because a lot of the affirmations and a lot of the Mm. statements and a lot of the, the, um, the positive um, Mm. aura that you are giving Mm. reminds me of Katrina. Uh, um, Katrina is in Georgia and her organization is Loving Yourself, No More Excuses. What? Um, what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the top. So now it's the top. Loving Yourself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. So I know that you and her would connect because you both um, are coming from that the same kind of uh, vibes, the same kind of um, feelings. Um, a lot of the a lot of the phrases that you've used, uh, Katrina. I, I can just see her all over <laughs> you right now. Um, so, so I want to make sure. <laughs> yes, I want to connect you oh. with her. Her name is Katrina Thomas. Oh. So I'm going to definitely connect you with her, but also Alicia. Richardson. Um, she's an advocate and she goes with me pretty often to go speak to um, domestic violence victims. Um, and she does life coaching. And her whole premise or her whole reason for being a life coach is she wants to teach women how to love themselves again. Um, so I think that that would be another great connection for you. Um, and I would love for you to come with us to the show. you know what you do because the more uh oh oh no we lost her where did she go okay hopefully we'll be able to get her back um but in connecting her to some people in the community who um are just like her who believe in loving yourself and believe in giving back and knowing that it is a journey sometimes and sometimes it takes so much effort or so much out of us when we help other people and sometimes we have to stop and say you know I need to take care of Tiffany or I need to take care of Latasha or I need to take care of Pauline or I need to to, um, uh, take care of David We have to take care of ourselves because we can't help anyone else if we are not taking care of ourselves. We can't take care of our children. We can't take care of our households. um, We can't take care of the people in the community. We cannot be strong vessels without um, taking care of ourselves. Self-care is so important. So I'm really glad that we got a chance to talk to Miss Pauline and hopefully... I'm sorry, I keep saying Pauline. Her last name is Pauling. Her first name is Precious. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so glad that we had a chance to talk to Miss Precious. Um, I'm not sure if I can get her back on. I will try. Let's see. Oh, there she is. Okay. So I'm adding her now. Let's see if we can get her back on. Here she goes. I'm back. I don't know why I said, oh, Lord, my was getting good, I huh? Uh, I was just doing some, you know, trying to wrap I heard it up. You. So that, you were yeah. doing great. I was, I was like, like oh, yeah. No. I'll just keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> so your organization, what does your organization do? I know the mission. We know what your mantra is, but do you have like specific services? Do you have certain populations that you target? Tell us more about your organization. Well, what I've done, I've been volunteering at like the women's shelter at the schools. I do uh, cleaning up at a Queens thing every month at the last as a refill station. And I have went on hiatus these next two months because I'm planning my conference on May 4th and it's called Queening Up in the Queen City. It'll have eight amazing speakers, um, great food. It'll be an eight to four experience. We also have Mm -hmm. an all male panel because I want the women to be able to ask real raw questions. So we'll go from all kinds of levels, all ages so that we can okay. have the men up there actually speak for themselves. So too often we try to speak for the men and we can't. So that I've been married 17 right. years and I still don't understand <laughs> how he thinks. So I'm not even going to do that. So I want to make that mm-hmm. available. 
And so, but mm -hmm. yeah, I really try to just go around and be a part of other people's and collaborate because I feel like the mm -hmm. I Choose Me message is the core of every single thing. And so I yes. try to be a part of everybody's thing. I go to the churches. I mean, wherever mm -hmm. I can go that I can empower the schools. I was teaching poetry classes at the schools with community mm -hmm. in schools, trying to give back to them. And so just any and everywhere, any and everywhere. I'm in a process of uh, looking for a building so that I can create mm -hmm. a space where we can give each other the tools, the people that can't afford the tools in order to change mm -hmm. their mindset, right? Because we get stuck because we don't know what to do or how to do it, or even we may not even be able to afford the different things that's going to get us to where we need to be. And so the vision is to get like-minded people to come together and pour into each other so that we can change our mindset so we can change our lives. Yeah, that's very important. Um, we can't do this work by ourselves. Um, even though we all have our, um, our, I guess, expertise or our experiences, yeah. or our niches or whatever the case may be, we can't do this kind of work that you and I are doing no. or I yes. Katrina and I mentioned Alicia. We cannot do any of this without the help of our community leaders and without mm. our other advocates mm. and without our other survivors because mm. and I, I can't say it enough it truly takes a village and it takes yes. for us to speak up so when we speak up we inspire others to speak up yes. and that's how we, we we make change without mm. our voices we can't make change so um I I admire what you're doing Thank um, you, you said that you for 17 years did you say that yes 17 wow. years yes five well, kids <laughs> five kids wow five kids, three <laughs> girls and two boys so when i say we have uh -huh. we wear so many hats under, under the crown yeah. that's why i do the yeah. refill station because we do so much and we make it look so effortless that people don't yeah. understand how much it how much it requires for us to show up at that magnitude to nurture at that level. And so the refill mm -hmm. station is about us coming together and inspiring each other. I say it's like the airport because we all are about to take off. And so while yeah. we're in the midst of taking off, that we celebrate each other. We see, what do you need? What do I need? Yeah. How do I get you closer? You need two steps. I'm three steps. Because mm -hmm. I think that we as queens, and once we come together, we'll change the whole mm -hmm. world. The yeah, whole it, it's world. so much. It, it, when we come together, we move mm. together, we empower uh. each other. It it really upsets me when I see, even in the helping profession or the the helping mm. community that we're in, how some people can. And I don't see a lot of it, but sometimes you see those the the people that you see that they're they're pulling everybody else's resources but they're not mm. putting out resources or yes. you know they're always talking about what their accomplishments are but not acknowledging the people that have helped them that get happened. there yes um, you can't be in this you can't be in the community um mm. saying that you're a survivor and saying that you want to help people mm. when you don't acknowledge the people that are around you and surround yes. you and who are helping you and, and who are pouring mm. their time and their effort into mm. you, into the mentoring and the training yeah. and just, you know, putting you in the, the circle to network with other people. Um, mm. it, it takes, it takes a lot to go out and talk to people about our experiences. Yes. It takes a lot for us to say, you know, I'm a, a survivor of child molestation. It took me I'm years. Yeah, it, it takes yeah. it takes a lot out of you. Mm. It really does. Mm. Um, mm. So we can't we can't do this by ourselves. We we need that mm. support and we need that time to refill. You know. Yes. And that's right. <laughs> to pray, to worship together, to love one yes. each other. Yes. We need that. We need that. And not just us women, our men, our men and our kings, they need it as well. Absolutely. Definitely. But the better we are, the better they going to be. <laughs> That's right. That's right. What did James Brown say? This world would be nothing without nothing, a woman. Nothing, nothing <laughs> without a woman. 
<laughs> I love it. I, so I was gonna say yeah, before we sorry. before you end, I definitely I have a poem called "Reclaim My Spirit," and it's for okay. people who who you know grown past molestation. And it says, okay. "Why is it that you've stolen my innocence and left to replace it with your shame?" And somehow embedded in my spirit that I am the one to blame. Because I realized that the shame you left was not my course to bear. And it sent me on a journey of my life filled with questions of despair. What did I do wrong? What message did I send? And I found myself pondering this question time and time again. So now I'm trapped in this existence struggling with me because I've allowed your shame to be the only thing I see. And I saw it so much that I claim that, I'm sorry, and I saw it so much that I allowed the shame to be mine, which made me feel I left my spirit stranded in time. So I decided to go back through the years to claim what I lost, to get back my existence, and for my destiny, be my own boss. For you have taken too much already, and I choose this to be your end. Because when I let go of this hate, then my true healing can begin. Enough of my mm -hmm. life has been stolen at the hands of you, but I only claim strength from the pain I went through. For God is the rock on which I now stand. I have now taken my spirit out the palm of your hand. And the shame that I held, I now found out that is yours. So you can now take it back and add it to your various floors. Because I will no longer hold this guilt in my heart. But when I connected myself to God, I got a brand new start. My mm -hmm. innocence may have been stolen, but there is one thing that lives on. So now the mourning of my spirit is over, for I have repaired what was torn. Again, I mm -hmm. say I've released all the hate to make room for life love. And I only pray that God will continue to strengthen me from above. And so I dedicate that to anybody who had to experience what it felt to take your innocence. When you arrived at your innocence, I'm going to tell you, they tried to steal your life. You had something on your life that they saw. And so every mm -hmm. time you get up, every time you tell that story, every time you remove the shame, you illuminate even brighter. Because that light that you have is way more special, way more important when you show up with it on. Because we all got a light. We just got to turn it on. That's right. That's right. I love it. I love it. Your family, how does your family feel about you um, sharing your story and being so personal and, you know, giving so much of yourself? How do you, how does your family feel about that? They, they are very proud. You know, sometimes my husband sits, sits with me and he says, you know, I'm, I'm just in awe of who you've become. Through your, mm. you, after I hear your story, because it's, it's so easy for us to get caught. And then there's so many examples because growing up in that type of situation, you get to see the effects on other people. And when mm -hmm. you show up in a way that you can see the difference, you gotta, you gotta uh, um, acknowledge that strength and you gotta fall in love with that strength because it is so easy to get stuck in that mental health place because you're caught in the pain of what it represents. And so they are so mm -hmm. proud of me. They are so, mm -hmm. uh, they are my biggest supporters. My son be like, oh my God, get I choose me. I want, he, he don't want Nike flip flops. He want I choose me yeah. flip flops. And he's only nine <laughs> years old. He's a twin. Oh, and wow. so they are like, they are my everything. They are the reason that I can be as full as I am because I've taught them so long ago through nurturing them because I got the privilege of being a stay at home mom. I just always mm -hmm. instill that you come through me, you don't belong to me. And so I want you to understand that love grows everything so whatever it is that you have to share whatever it is that you can do to change somebody's life that is your job that is why you're here that is how you impact and because i've instilled that in them they don't know no difference they don't know no right. shame on no story they're like oh that's mm -hmm. mom they didn't hear it they they over it because it's just been yeah. a part of my life so they're proud they're proud it took me a while though it took me a while to be able to you know speak my voice and so what i learned <laughs> is that I got to show up. I just said today on my live that, you know, everybody always said, do you speak to that little girl inside? I say, are you mm -hmm. inspiring that little girl inside? That little mm -hmm. girl or boy inside of you that was hurt, that was broken, that was stuck, 
I want to know, are you inspiring them? Are they saying, wow, look at what you've become from what you've been through. And so it, every time you stand up in your story, that little girl inside is being inspired because you showed up for you. So you didn't have a voice and now you have a voice. So you couldn't, now you can. What are you doing with your cans? Your cans should be representing who you are today. So that inside girl, you inspire her to say, wow, I love you. I'm proud of you. So make the little girl inside proud. Don't apologize. You can't go back. Make her see who you become because of what she went through. I'm everything I am because of what the little girl went through. And so when I get to inspire you and inspire the world, it was because I showed up for me. And so I just ask that everybody with Inspire the little girl inside, inspire the little boy inside, because that's when you change the world and that's when you illuminate. Because when I show up for me, I can show up for you. You know, I, I never um, thought of it that way. And I that and I'm not really sure if you can tell, but <laughs> you, you just brought uh -huh. tears to my eyes. Because, um, you know, there are still times and even though I will, I feel that I'm a survivor and I'm sure you feel like you're a survivor mm -hmm. as well. Um, even though I am a survivor, that doesn't mean that that little girl inside doesn't cry sometimes. That's right. And that doesn't mean that that little girl inside always understands why. Mm. Um, that also doesn't mean that the little girl inside is still not craving those things that she missed or were mm. taking away yes. from her. Yes. So what you just said, um, it it would it might it would be something that my myself I might need to work on because mm. um I see myself as a survivor and but I see myself as a now adult survivor um mm. but i know that i still feel the pain sometimes yes and yes. you know that's something that i think that i'm gonna try my you know i'm gonna work on myself is you mm. know talking to her and letting her know yes. that you know you are a survivor too you have survived yes. with me um it's mm. not your fault that you are beautiful mm. um, yes and you know, I'm here. I'm here to protect you and I'm here to guide you. So I really yes. appreciate you bringing me in. I'm glad you brought mm. that out. That, I, I never mm. thought about that before. Um, mm. But even though we're a survivor, does not mean that we don't have that, still have that voice and that sometimes we don't still have that pain. And yes. that sometimes we just need that extra. Um, mm. And I, I'm not sure, you know, if your husband knew you when you you know, went through this or whatever but with my yeah. husband he didn't okay so with nope. my husband he's, we've been married two years now mm -hmm. and when he goes to speak with me it's not like we went out on our first couple of dates and we decided to be together and I said you know what let me give you all my stuff and put it on the table <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> he didn't get all of my past and my childhood yes. and the, he didn't get that all right mm -hmm. away and so even mm -hmm. now, we've been married for two years, he's still learning about some of my experiences. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. um, and I find that those are the times where I feel the most vulnerable when I know that he's hearing yes. it for the first time. Yes. Um, and that little girl, she comes up. She she shows yes. her face. Yes. Yeah, she does. Yes. So I and really appreciate you oof. bringing that out. Yes. And that's really powerful do. because even with my husband, um, I didn't tell him, it, and it, it caused problems in a relationship because, you know, coming yeah. through that, you're not yeah. as sexual as my yeah. husband would like, and there was some right. limits and some boundaries, and at first it was making him feel less than mm -hmm. because I didn't even know mm -hmm. that I was still suffering in silence, right? Because you had put on the mask for so long that you have fooled so many people with that that joy mm -hmm. and this, this facade that... I'm okay without ever saying mm. I have been so broken and that this yes. strength that you see is from years of, of covering up that pain for so mm -hmm. long. And so I, yes. had, I had to totally unveil myself and I'm still doing, I said 17 years and I had him crying just 
a couple a, a, a couple of months <laughs> ago because there was something mm -hmm. that I didn't even think about because we forget our stories because yeah. we so we remove ourselves so much from it. And when you get into mm -hmm. these situations and these moments, that little girl comes up and it's like, wow, she who does. is that? She right. always comes up. And so that's why I say you are always inspiring her and celebrating her and you are giving her a voice. So yes. when you speak today, that is the voice that she didn't have because for so yeah. long I held on to that pain. And when you show up, you are releasing it with every time you speak, you're releasing that little girl and she's getting prouder and prouder every time you speak because she wish she could have. She wish she could have. She wish she yeah. could have. Mm. Yes, yes, indeed. Mm. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I want to read some of the comments because you have some very good comments. Oh, um, Miss Tabitha said that she loved your poem. Um, that was kind of early in our in our interview, mm -hmm. so she could have caught the first or the second because we second or the third. <laughs> yeah, yeah it could have been. Um, but she said it was a very beautiful poem. Um, we also had someone who said that um, you have to acknowledge your part. In, and I believe that was probably around the time when I talked about accountability as being mm. survivors. Accountability for what our part is in a relationship this, yes. or with anybody mm. that we deal with. Um, and she said that you have to forgive yourself and take back your power. And I think that's, yes. that's part of your message too. When you're choosing yourself, yep. when you say, I choose me, that's you taking back your power in your life. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Another comment was uh, from Miss Vicky. She's an advocate. She said that she's dealt with victims of spiritual abuse, and some abusers are good at masking their abusive tendency with religious rhetoric mm. and scripture. And we find that a, we find yeah, that too. a lot. Yes, and, you know, you have, when we when I started taking um, domestic violence out further into the community and talking mm. to the, the churches, I noticed that how some of the churches kind of shied away from it because mm -hmm. they feel that they're, you know, there's no, this is not going on in our church, so forth and so on. But when you don't talk about these things or you speak up like, you know, mm. the whole podcast is all about, when you don't yeah. speak up, then how do you know that the person on the next row or that mm. the person that hears your message is not going through the same thing. They're, they yes. just aren't ready to talk about it or they're not strong enough yet to talk about to it. Yes. So, yeah. So if you're not talking about it in, in the churches or if you're not talking or if you're not talking about it in your communities, then you don't know how many people out there are really suffering in silence. Suffering in something. silence. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Too, and that's, um, and another, that's what we do too often. Yeah, that's true. Um, we have Mr. David Atkinson in Maryland. He said that I've always said and believed that women are so much more stronger and powerful than men. Well, thank you, wow, David. <laughs> thank you. We agree. We agree. <laughs> my family's coming home, so my dog, my, my puppy is greeting everybody. Um, <laughs> let me see. What others do we have? Um, the people are commenting on your poem. Thank um, you. Uh, David, at the, he said later on that glad to be a part of this and being able to listen. Miss um, mm. uh, author Jean Benton, she is a writer, author, and she's also an advocate and speaker herself. She says self care is a must. Self care is, a is definitely yes. a month. Yes. Um, so those are some <laughs> of the comments. Uh, let me see. Miss Ashley said that we can make major moves if we all work together. We must build each other yes. up and not tear each other down. And that is so, so true. true. That is everything. So many yes, we can move so many mountains when we have people there um, that are helping us. Um, and I think it's very, it's very important for us to surround ourselves with people who share our passion as well. Yeah. Um, that can also be reassuring and strengthening for us as well. Absolutely. So what, is there anything that you would like to say to end, um, to kind of wrap up our, our conversation today? What is it that we need to know or take away from this interview with you, Ms. Precious? What I want you to take away is that you were born enough. What I want you to take away is that what you've been through is what makes you so amazing. And what I want you to understand is that until you can really, truly 
Accept yourself from right where you are. You will never get to where you're trying to go because the job and the, the responsibility of you is to understand that you were born enough and that until you bring your light, the world doesn't get that illumination that we're waiting on. And so you got to continue to show up for yourself if you need help with that, if you need some guidance, please feel free to go on my website at preciouspaulin.com. Please get a mm -hmm. book, these affirmations, the calendar, the poetry, the CD, all of that will help you fall in love with yourself. Because sometimes we forget how amazing we really are. And my job That's is true. to remind you. That's it. I just want to remind you of your greatness so that you can be who only you can be because if you don't show up, we won't get <laughs> what we need. That's it. If you don't show up, we missing something. So I want you to right. know that you have something that we <laughs> need. So do the investment in yourself in order to change your mindset so that you can change your life and that you can make a difference for everybody you touch. Everybody you touch. And I, I just want to say thank you, Queen, for providing this platform and also in, in, inviting me in without even knowing me. <laughs> I know. That's I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I, I, I couldn't, when you sent me the message, um, in, in our, um, our inbox and I saw your hashtag, I was like, <laughs> Yeah, That's it. I, we really did not talk about anything else because it was it was powerful enough with your hashtag. But the I choose me. I mean, yeah. everyone, and just like Miss Jean said, and we we've talked about in our interview today, we have to. It starts here. It starts mm -hmm. with ourselves. In order yes. for us to make change, we have to be the change in ourselves. We have yes. to um, you know, be motivated. We have to love ourselves. When we love mm. ourselves, we can love others. Um, yes. When we uh, bring God into it, we have a fortress that can't be knocked down. Can't um, be. It can't be. When we have God there or we have that, that, that higher power and that higher being, plus we love ourselves and we're doing for our mm. community, then... Yes. then there's so many things that you can do and mm. we can't do it by ourselves, but it mm. starts with us. It yes. definitely starts with me. I choose me. I choose me. <laughs> so as I fill myself up, I get to overflow. Oh, yes. so let me, I want to, yes. I want to end with a poem called Wishing on a Star. And it's for every okay. dreamer out there. Crying Sounds and, good. You ready? Wishing on a star. Yeah. Crying yes. and waiting, holding on to a dream. Never hesitating that life isn't what it seems. You know this journey that you're on leads to the same place, but as you're making different detours, you can't keep the tears from rolling down your face. When will I open the door to this dream I've held on to for so long? When will I complete the lyrics to end in this sad song? For it seems day after day I'm getting further from where I want to be, and I'm crying out to God to come and rescue me. Rescue me from this disappointment because things just won't go right. Throw in the towel before I get killed in this fight. But what he had to show me was that I had another round of fight to give. And he then gave me a sip of water and breathed the will in me to live. He said the dream that he gave me is what keeps me going. And he wakes me up with that purpose without me ever even knowing. That the dream that he gave me sustained the life he placed in me. Which made me want to strive and love who he created me to be. So I did not get so caught up in a dream but embraced what it meant. Because giving me purpose is what the dream represents. So I would never let go of my dream. I mean, my purpose, no matter how long I wait, because God may not come when I want him, but he's never a minute too late. And so I dedicate that to every dreamer out there. You have something inside that must be birthed. And so I want you to know that he's never going to be too late. Just continue to show up for you and he'll open every door. I promise you that. Yes. I don't have nothing else to say. We're just going to you end with that. You don't have nothing else to say. We're going to end with that. <laughs> so where can we find you? Tell us your website again. Tell us your social media links. Um, and that's how we're closed out. How can we find so, you? <laughs> you can find me on preciouspaulin.com. You, you can find my Facebook group page. is I choose me. Hashtag no more excuses or Precious Paulin, as well on Instagram, it is I Choose Me, hashtag no more excuses, or Precious Paulin, and on Twitter, is I Choose Me Now. <laughs>
Yes. And that's I that. choose me. <laughs> I think that's yeah. actually like the place, place of power. I choose I me. My, my, listen, my cousin, my cousin and my husband calls me, uh, what do y'all call me, honey? Sister Soldier. They be like, oh, Sister Soldier coming. <laughs> Yes, it's been such an it. amazing hour. It. Such an amazing yes. hour. I celebrate you, Queen, for showing up. You are Thank a light. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. You are amazing and you are my light. Thank you so much. Thank Have you. a good one. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>